Hey guys, it's Miss McGuire again. Uh, today we are going to do a little bit something a little bit different than we have been doing before. We are actually going to do some cut paper art, and it's going to be very very simple. It is going to be a ladybug, um, well, a ladybug piece of work. There's going to be several ladybugs on it, and I'm going to do several. And if you wanted to do more, all you would have to do was change the size of the way you're cutting your circles to make your ladybugs. And right now, that is my Molly. I'm so sorry that she barks all the time. Even if I put her in the crate, she's still going to bark. So if you hear her from time to time, I apologize, okay? Um, th uh, this piece of artwork is going to call for one piece of white paper that you are actually going to glue everything to. You're going to need a piece of green construction paper and a piece of red construction paper. You may or may not use all of each sheet, depending on how... Uh, different you cut your pieces um, so you're also going to need a glue stick uh, markers preferably just the black marker and a pair of scissors um, we are going to do a ladybug piece of artwork there are tons of ladybug uh, ladybug books out there that you could read to go along with your ladybug uh, I just felt like this was something that we could do that was uh, very spring-like and summer-like. I actually wanted to do something with watermelons, but couldn't find a piece of artwork that I could do that I had all the materials here at home. And you may be facing that at home yourself, that you might not have construction paper, and you might not have scissors or glue, and that's okay. You can draw these ladybugs just as I've cut those out, okay? You can be creative and use your own creativity to come up with things that uh, are representational or look alike what I am doing, okay? So let's get started. So today what I'm going to do is use this green piece of paper to kind of look like the vegetation or the leaves or foliage or grass that could be behind these ladybugs. Um, I said vegetation and foliage. That is just a different way of saying um, green uh, growing plant life that could be in your garden or in your backyard or things that ladybugs would be on, okay? Uh, right now, they like to be on my siding outside. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's getting warm and they can, ba they can bathe in the sunshine outside on my siding and it's really warm and and it feels good to their skin. I don't know, but right now that's where they are at Miss McGuire's. Okay, so after I cut several strips, and I cut about five, but mine are pretty thick. If you wanted to do thinner ones, that's totally up to you. You would just cut them more skinny. Then I am going to uh, cut circles out of my red in order to show you that those are the ladybug um, bodies. And so I'm going to start at the corner here, and I'm going to make a pretty big ladybug back end that's a large one you know you can mix those and you could cut smaller or maybe even larger ones things like that look very good asymmetrical things on artwork are very pleasing to the eye asymmetrical which it means different on both sides like they're not mirror images of each other uh, people like to look at things like that. You don't really realize you like to look at things like that, but you would be more apt to look at something asymmetrical than you would symmetrical. Uh, it just makes your, um, probably makes your brain work a little harder, okay? So I've cut two large ones and one probably medium size, and now I'm going to cut one smaller, and I think I'm going to go in here just to be... I don't know, just to be asymmetrical again, because this is an odd number. Also, odd numbers of things on artwork looks well, too. So I had five pieces of green, and now I've got five round pieces of red. So asymmetrical things can be odd numbers as well. Uh, odd numbers on art look, look the best, too. They're more pleasing to the viewer's eye, okay? So I'm going to lay my red circles to the side for a minute, and I'm going to pick up my green, and I'm going to open up my glue, and I'm going to put a line of glue on the back of my green here, and I am just going to place them, I think the way I want to do it, is I think I'm going to place mine diagonally, which means it's a corner-to-corner -corner pattern that I'm going to be using. So this is a diagonal pattern, and I'm going to go ahead and glue this one up here at the top, and as you can tell, if I pick that up, I've got some pieces that are hanging off the side. Does that matter? 
Nope, it does not matter. I can take my scissors and I can trim that up and make that look nice. Get those little bitty pieces off. And perhaps I could take these two little pieces who now have glue on them and I could maybe put some pieces on this way. These are also still diagonal. And notice that I am trying to fit um, my pieces on there that maybe would look like real leaves or vegetation, okay? And so then I've got three more pieces that I'm going to lay on. And I am going to, this time, I'm going to go at a diagonal, but I'm going to go at a diagonal the other way, okay? And I'm going to, and this time I put it on the paper. As you can tell, there is no wrong way to do this, okay? So this is just how you want to be able to be able to create it. Um, if you wanted to, there's no rule saying that you could not um, take these pieces here. And I have one more piece, one more strip left of my green. There's no rule saying that you cannot take this and perhaps fold it like this. And I folded it over where there's like four pieces. And I'm going to take this and I think this time I'm going to cut out a leaf shape just like this and now I have four leaves that now I could possibly just somewhere along my page maybe throw in some leaves here because that is okay also you see I'm kind of creating this as I go that's okay to do it's okay for you not to have a real plan in mind. Artwork comes from the way that you think and the way that you want to do things. You may be looking at this and saying, oh, Miss McGuire, I don't like that. But that's okay. You don't have to like it. You just have to appreciate it. Um, being appreciative of art is like looking at it and trying to feel what the artist felt when they did it, okay? So I'm kind of feeling random today. Random means I just don't have a plan and I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants and I'm doing whatever I feel like doing today. Um, Ms. McGuire's felt this a lot here lately because of what we're going through and everything and that's okay. And you know, you can com com um, compile some artwork of some of your feelings if you wanted to. That's okay to do also and if you did that, I would so love to see it. Uh, that's what true art is, is when it comes from your soul and your mind and just how you're feeling, okay? And I'm just placing my circles now all around my green stuff. And there's going to come a time where you're going to have to overlap, okay? I had to overlap that one. Um, I'm covering up most of my green, so that's what overlapping means. And then I think I'm going to take this little, little baby one and I'm going to place it right there. Now... You're going to need to go back in and add glue and make sure that you've got this glue down. You've got these red pieces down, sorry, that so they're not popping off the page because that way they will not stay if you do not do them correctly, okay? So now we pretty much have the, the background of our picture. So <clears throat> what we're going to do now is you're going to uh, take out your black marker and you are going to make these little... Uh, circles become ladybugs, okay? So you're going to come up here to the top probably and you're going to make a round circle and this is going to be that ladybug's head. Uh, they have a divider down the middle of their bodies and they have spots that are peri periodically just kind of randomly scattered across their body. There's no right or right, wrong way to do this either. You can't have too many and you can't too, have too few, okay? Uh, they have antenna, okay? And then they also have legs, okay? And you're gonna just draw those on, okay? And you're gonna do that on all of the circles. Um, you could make them uh, all different ways. Um, you can also draw with your black marker down the center of your leaves and create some texture with some veins in that leaf. Um, you can also um, draw maybe some periodically some lines across your uh, stems. And when you draw a, a diagonal line and then you put a vertical or a horizontal line across those, this is called cross hatching. Uh, hatching is when you just do the diagonal, like I'm doing right here. And when you cross that line, 
to go in a different direction, this is what an artist calls cross hatching. And you can do a whole entire artwork piece with hatching and cross hatching and stippling or pointillism. Stippling, and I've talked about this before in some of the other ones, is when you do some random little dots in places. And that's okay to do too because you could probably see some of that on some of your vegetation that uh, was out in your garden or around your house. Um, you know, different th ways to use your pen and your marker, that's okay to do because all of the little leaves and things that are laying around in nature, they're not perfect. If you pick them up and investigate and really looked at them, they have all kinds of imperfections on them. That means they're not perfect. Imperfect means not perfect. So, and there's really nothing in this world that is perfect. So, don't get caught up on trying to make your artwork look perfect either because it's not going to be perfect, but it is going to be perfect to you. And that's what matters, okay? So, now that I've got some designs and a little bit of um, texture on my uh, plants in my background, I'm going to continue on until I finish up all of my ladybugs here. Um, you can make your... Uh, line down the middle of your ladybugs curved. You don't have to fill in great big dots. You can make do polka dots like I'm doing now. Uh, you can make your legs a little longer. You could do all sorts of things with this. There is a multitude of things you could do. You could also go back with a crayon and color in this white area to make it look like either sky or grass or it could be any color. Uh, because who's to say that this is not the your vegetation or your leaves and, and grass and things are not growing over top of something else? I mean, I'm looking at my window right now, and we have canoes or or um, or uh, boats that are hanging on my fence. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to use this summer. And if there was grass growing up in front of one of those uh, things, then uh, and ladybugs were swarming it, which is very possible. I could possibly color this back here pink because that's what color the boat is that would be back there. Or there's a green one and also another kind of uh, blue one. So if you wanted to do that, you can. You can use your imagination or you could go outside and investigate and look and see, hey, where would a ladybug live? And what would mine look like? And then you could come back inside and create. And just like I said before, if you do not have this sort of thing laying around at home, like Miss McGuire didn't have the stuff to make the watermelon that I wanted to make. Be creative. Be creative. Look around. See what you can use. If I didn't have any kind of paper at all or markers, but I had glue, I could maybe look for a top of a Pepsi bottle and maybe it was red and I could glue it down to a piece of paper and possibly make that the shell of my ladybug. There is all types of possibilities, guys. Things that you can do that no one else probably would ever think of, okay? I so miss you guys. I wish that we were in my classroom right now and I was standing in front of the board seeing all your cute little smiling faces. I appreciate you for logging on. I hope that you will continue to do this uh, even if um, when school is out, Miss McGuire will still be posting some pictures and some videos on her Facebook page. Not, I'm sorry, not my Facebook page, my YouTube channel. Miss McGuire's got to get used to that. I've never had a YouTube channel before. Um, I will continue to post creative things online throughout the summertime. Uh, it won't be as, as often, um, but I will have new things up. And I will continue to put new things up for you. And I still want to hear from you. You can still email me um, throughout the summertime on my email address. And your parents have that. Um, I've shared it on Dojo. And um, you guys can um, email me your pictures. I would love to see them. Um, one day maybe we'll have a virtual art show where we'll put everybody's cool pictures and their name online on uh, YouTube. Um, with your parents' permission, of course, and uh, only using your first name. But if you wanted to um, maybe do that, or maybe we'll just do anonymously where you can watch and say, oh, look, there's mine. So anyway, um, I appreciate you all for logging on. I hope you're having a good time doing these art projects. I hope you're doing art projects of your own. I hope you're... Um, I have had several students send me things that... Um, 
have only their 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 artwork. They say it comes from their own creative brain. I had one student say. So I really love that, and I think that that is great, and I really love to see those things too, as long as you're creating. Think about your vocabulary that goes along with your artwork. Think about how Miss McGuire would probably teach you and say things like overlapping and symmetry, and even things, even words that do not really represent, they're not rep well, Miss McGuire's got tongue tied representational of an art term such as foliage and vegetation and things like that they all bridge over actually those two words would probably be scientific terms um, 